Who is Andrew Tate? He was the most Googled person in 2022. And I don't think we can have enough conversation about him that is helpful, that is thoughtful, that is breaking it down. So here's the question. Is he a force for good or evil? I want you to answer in the comments. What are your initial thoughts? Is he a force for good or evil? First ranking, I'm going to give the, the man himself, the top G, as some would say. I'm going to give him a hit right off the bat. Here's a hit. Here's a positive. This man is connecting with, resonating with, influencing with, starting a movement with the hardest to connect to uh, group of people. And I would say right now, the most important group of people to connect to, and that is young men. Young men are, are both the cause of much of the world's current problems, and they will be the cause of much of the world's future problems. And this is a group of people that everyone's answering the question, how do we get a hold of them? And I'll give them a hit because he has figured out how to resonate with an important generation uh, and a group of people. And I think that many, many people would do well to at least observe and try to dissect how, why, and what is he doing to lead this so many young men. I have met so many young men who literally have come up to me, whether in a in a church setting um, or just out in the world, they say, Andrew Tate has changed my life. I just taught a class um, answering the question uh, from a biblical standpoint, from a Christian evangelical standpoint, which you're going to see that's that's how a lot of what I'm approaching it, but I'm inviting different perspectives as well in my research, but that that's how I'm coming at it. That's my personal belief in ethic. I taught a class, biblical masculinity, Andrew Tate or Jesus Christ. I had 40 young men in it at a Christian high school, and I asked them to raise their hand. How many of you have listened to and been impacted positively by Andrew Tate? All 40 hands ran, rose up. Um, all different types of people, every ethnicity in the room were saying, yeah, I've been impacted by him. You cannot doubt um, his impact. It is wild. Okay, the first miss that I'm going to give him, though, despite doing those things, I think that his ultimate ethic, the ultimate framework that he gives towards how men relate to women, if you really break it down and you listen to the whole body of work and you see where all of his conclusions really take you, it puts women in a position to be understood more as property and as something to be managed instead of someone to be loved. I think this comes from somebody who does not have long-term covenant or commitment with one woman. I think it's clear that he is a transactional uh, relationships with women. I believe him when he says he would physically protect a woman. I wonder if he would emotionally protect them. I wonder if he ultimately makes them feel valued. And I, I wonder if his ultimate message would, would cause young men to value my two daughters. Um, and I don't think it would. That's a big miss for me is I think his ultimate ethic, while despite saying that he loves women um, and values them, I think it really leads people down a wrong path. I wouldn't want my son to learn uh, uh, from him how to treat women ultimately. And I wouldn't want my daughters to date somebody uh, like him or that has learned from him. A hit that, that I'll give him is I think he, he he pushes down personal responsibility really well. You can really see that he is helping people, especially that group of young men. They take responsibility for your actions, take responsibility for what you do, work hard. He's pushing against some of the laziness, some of the finger pointing in our culture. I think this is a powerful, powerful thing. One of the guys that I talked to that, that I mentor, a teenage guy, he said, yeah, when he told me specifically, he related to me that I get stressed about homework and he reminded me that my ancestors fought saber-toothed tigers. It did something in me. That is powerful. Speaking to men in that way, the ability to do that, that is a powerful aspect of what he does. And that element of what he discusses, personal responsibility, owning your mistakes, owning your failures, knowing that your life is in your, in, in your control, that you're not a victim, that you can overcome, that you can do these things, that is a positive thing that he does my next uh miss though is i think that he he puts far too much value on uh on, on personal possession well i think that it's a good thing to to help people understand how to manage finances and encourage them to to have uh wealth to a degree to not be um, trapped by poverty to get out of debt and, and all these things i think that he puts far too much value on on material possessions and i think that instead of teaching financial responsibility i think he teaches uh it more lends itself to greed and materialism, which I don't think is a positive force for uh, the world. Um, last but not least, but right now it's two to two. So this is the a final shot. The final shot here right now, I'm gonna give it over to a miss. One of the, the other toxic things that he does is I think that he, in his communication, um, kind of pits emotional sensitivity um, and uh, strength against each other instead of being somebody that integrates both of those things i think that he portrays himself um as somebody who uses aggression to overcome all things a healthy man understands that his sensitivity and his strength go hand to hand 
and that actually instead of fighting against the world that rather fighting some of the battles on the inside and understanding himself on the inside um, is actually how he overcomes things um, externally um, and I don't want a generation of, uh, of tough guys uh, with, with shaved heads couple of final thoughts as we wrap up episode one of Project W. I think that people like Andrew Tate are only popular because they fill a vacuum. My belief is this. We don't need a millionaire kickbox top G YouTube sensation to lead the men of this generation. All we need is some everyday men who understand who they are in God, who can find their value, even if it's maybe you, you haven't found that yet in God. I believe that that's the best place to find it. And who would rise up and say, I know who I am. I work hard. I value women, not as property, as partners. Um, and I understand that there are great things that I've been put on this earth to do and that I can do hard things. I can overcome things. I believe that if more men like this would rise up and exist, people like Andrew Tate, we don't need them. So at the end of the day, what's the ranking? I think that this man's a miss. Well, he's got some hits. I think overall, you can find much better mentors. And that is he a force for good or evil? Man, I think our world um, has seen some positive momentum because of the conversations that have started around him. But I think at the end of the day, we don't need people like Andrew Tate to lead um, our young men. I think there's better uh, models out there. This has been the first episode of Project W Key. We'll be dropping these every single week as well as dispersing these things on short form. Please, let's have a conversation. Obviously, this was clipped version of a very uh, important conversation. Let me know your thoughts below. Share this with a friend and we'll see you back next week.